when you're buying meat at the grocery store, is it worth the extra money to get the organic pasture-raised grass-fed meat versus the conventional feedlot, corn-fed or grain-fed meat? In today's show, I'm gonna share with you two different studies that have convinced me that going with the pasture-raised grass-fed meat is actually worth the extra dollar. Uh, one study that was recently published in the Journal of Animal Science and Biotechnology by Stephen Van Vallette over at Utah State University. Uh, his lab is doing a lot of great research comparing the phenotypic differences between conventionally raised feedlot grain-fed animals versus grass-fed uh, pasture-raised regenerative uh, animals in terms of the constitutions and constituents in the meat, not just the fats, the omega-3s, the omega-6 ratios, and so forth, but the phenolics. We're going to look at that as well as bison, uh, the different compounds in bison, uh, and the health of the animal and the mitochondrial metabolites, levels of oxidative stress, vitamin E, and beyond. So let's get into this study titled, Pasture Finishing of Bison Improves Animal Metabolic Health and Potential Health Promoting Compounds in Meat. So what was really interesting about this study, and the, the graphics are phenomenal. I'll share this one on the, on the screen right here, figure four. So essentially what we're looking at here is the same animal, right? This is the same phenotype. These animals are not genetically or phenotypically dif different, but they're raised in different environments eating different foods. And it turns out that those environmental factors are impacting the constituents of the meat that ultimately become your cells, right? We know that nutrition is the building blocks. When we eat food, the, the proteins and uh, nucleic acids and the amino acids and the carbohydrates and fats, we use those for energy, but they become the building blocks for our own physiology, which I think is really interesting. And it turns out that there are higher constituents of polyphenolic compounds in both grass-fed pasture-raised bison as well as pasture-raised grass-fed cattle compared to feedlot conventionally raised cattle and bison respectively. Uh, but even more importantly is 43% of the profiled compounds are different uh, when looking at this through the lens of metabolomics and proteomics. And I think this is really interesting. So they go on to say, relative to pasture finished animals, the muscles of pen finished animals displayed elevated glucose metabolites, elevated triglycerides, and markers of oxidative stress and proteolysis. In contrast, pasture finished animals displayed improved mitochondrial function and carnitine metabolism. They say pasture finishing also concentrated higher levels of phenolics and very long chain fatty acids in their meat while having lower levels of common advanced lipoperoxidation products and glycation end products. In contrast, vitamins B5, B6, and vitamin C, gamma and beta tocopherol, and three phenolics commonly found in alfalfa were 2.5 fold higher in pen finished animals, suggesting some um, feeding concentrates and or a mix of grazed plants uh, may be beneficial. So I think this is really interesting stuff. Now, the bigger question is, what does this do for human health? We don't to the best of my knowledge, have a randomized controlled trial where you have individuals eating grass-fed or pasture-raised meat versus feedlot meat and so forth. But presumably, um, because you're ingesting these micronutrients and the animals are healthier, logic would suggest that that would be a better food to eat. And so we're going to uh, further dive into this and talk about this study as well, uh, titled Pasture Finishing of Cattle in Western U.S. Rangelands Improves Markers of Animal Metabolic Health and Nutritional Compounds in beef. But first, friends, I just want to say thank you all for being here. Thanks for hitting that like button and sharing this video if you found it helpful. Today's show is brought to you by our pals over at nadsunder.com, the makers of the best organic and non-sprayed cotton underwear for health-conscious men just like you. I wear nads exclusively now. I'm embarrassed to admit I used to go to Nordstrom Rack and buy the cheapest boxers and underwear I could possibly buy. And I didn't think that the chemicals in the clothing could impact my genitals and overall you know, male health and, and overall health. But we now have good evidence to suggest that clothing off gases, chemicals and microplastics, and that can be problematic, particularly for male health. We know that microplastics are concentrated in the penile tissue and they can get into your arteries, uh, even the carotid artery and coronary artery and cause problems with your long-term health. So if you want to optimize your health and really dial things in, I would suggest that you go to nadsunder.com and use the code HIH to save on the best organic cotton. This is non-sprayed cotton underwear that money can buy. If you're getting hot and using a lot of friction during exercise, you really should be wearing organic non-sprayed cotton underwear because you don't want those chemicals from the conventional underwear and boxer companies to get into your body. So visit nadsunder.com and use the code HIH at checkout. 
So getting back to uh, the nutritional components and nutritional compounds, uh, when we're comparing pasture-raised, grass-finished animals uh, and, and grass-fed animals compared to animals that are uh, raised in feedlots, uh, fed basically grains that are sprayed with Roundup and glyphosate and all sorts of uh, insecticides and fungicides and so forth. This is a great graphical abstract from the study that I was talking to you about bison. Uh, essentially what you see is a more metabolically healthy animal, uh, higher levels of fatty acid and, and mitochondrial metabolism and lower levels of glucose uh, related metabolism. In contrast to the feedlot animals where you see a much higher concentration of omega-6 fats, it's interesting the feedlot animals do have more taurine. They have more B vitamins. So maybe a combination of alfalfa in the grassy fields that these animals are eating might be helpful. But overall, in comparing the metabolic characteristics between the pasture-raised grass-fed animals compared to the uh, feedlot animals, you know, you do see a, a overall preponderance of better metabolic health, which suggests to me that we're going to be getting probably more coenzyme Q10 and different mitochondrial metabolites. It's just a higher quality meat. So I think the juice is worth the squeeze in this context. And so one of the things that I just recommend, because people are like, look, when you go to Costco or Whole Foods, it's really hard to differentiate. Like, you know, what? where should I be allocating my money? And I, I will just, uh, you know, pause and agree with Sean Baker. I mean, you know, corn finished feedlot beef is way better uh, than pasta and spaghetti and pizza and fast food. I mean, no doubt. So, you know, I want to meet people where they're at and ensure that, you know, you don't get intimidated by the fact that, uh, you know, pasture raised and, and grass fed uh, meat can be a little bit more expensive, but work with a local rancher. I think this is the best thing to do. It's really fun to do. You can use Google. You, When you're driving around, oftentimes in the countryside, you'll see little signs, grass fed meat for sale, you know, and you can go pay cash or write this person a check, you know, get used to buying a quarter a cow or half a cow. You get the bones, you can get the organs, put it in a freezer, go to Costco, get a freezer or find one uh, on Best Buy or some such thing. And this is, I think, you know, getting back to overall health. Uh, we see this in parts of Pennsylvania, rural New York, rural Washington, rural California. I mean, this is how uh, food should be uh, in my opinion, we should be getting back to the basics when it comes to food because um, when we're relying upon these major uh, ranchers and major food stores and stuff like that uh, to give us fresh food, I mean, it has to be shipped on trucks and, and all that. I just think it's way better if possible, friends, to buy local. Um, and again, I know we've been talking about bison, but this recent report, uh, another uh, study that I was mentioning by Stephen Van Vellet at Utah State University, again, their lab is doing amazing work, uh, finding there are much higher levels of polyphenolic compounds. And that's what I wanted to focus on as we finish up this video, because when we think of polyphenolics, you know, anthocyanidins and things in say spinach or blueberries or uh, green tea, we often think of, you know, plant-based products, right? Like, you know, you're not going to get polyphenolic antioxidant compounds in meat, right? Well, it turns out that evidence suggests that when you're eating meat from an animal that openly ranged on pasture and ate grass, those polyphenolics from that material that's, again, fermented in the rumen. A rumen, the rumen is amazing. I mean, think about how that word has got itself into the English language. Like you're ruminating over something. You're thinking about something. The rumen is, is this big bacterial ecosystem and multiple chambers that I think in like a, a 700 pound cattle is about the size of three beer kegs. Like it's big. The rumen is just amazing. And it turns out that the rumen gets sick when cattle are eating too much grain. And so this is known as acidosis. Uh, and that can cause bacterial uh, from the rumen to leak into the sterile compartments of the, of the, of the animal and cause them to die actually. So uh, it's really important for the animal health as well, for the health of the rumen to ensure that these animals are eating what nature intended them to eat and design and, and optimize them to eat. And that is of course, uh, you know, pa just grass on pasture and various uh, grasses and things of the sort. So you know, when we sort of circumvent the system and try to accelerate the growth of these, of these animals by giving them corn and soy and alfalfa and TMRs, total mix rations, and this is a method of feeding cattle, cattle uh, with mostly grains, uh, synthetic vitamins enriched in, you know, say, folic acid or uh, cyanocobalamin or whatever, that can disturb the rumen and the health of the rumen. And the bottom line is we want to be eating the flesh of healthy animals. Uh, again, we've talked about these, the, the mitochondrial metabolites, the nutritional uh, compounds 
compounds, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, uh, the conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. This was really popular in the early 2000s as a fat loss aid. I don't think it's really... Uh, amazing for fat loss, but there are other brain-based benefits and so forth. I think it is probably uh, healthier. Uh, you'd be curious to look at the creatine and the taurine content, uh, carnitine content as well. But again, the polyphenolic content is interesting. So when comparing pasture-raised animals versus feedlot animals, there are higher levels of various antioxidants and polyphenolic compounds that you know, we normally attribute to, say, taking greens drinks or drinking green tea. And while I personally drink green tea and I think it's health promoting, you know, it's nice to know that if you're having meat from your local rancher, that it too has polyphenolic compounds. And so those, of course, are higher in the animals that are out eating grass because, you know, various plants have adapted the ability to create polyphenolic compounds to mitigate uh, the UV damage from the sun. Think about blueberries, right, in the high mountain. The reason why they're purple is to prevent some of the UV uh, degradation of their own plant DNA and, and materials. And so uh, it, these are adaptive uh, antioxidant compounds that have health-promoting abilities when you eat them. And so it's really interesting to know that grass-fed, pasture-raised meat has more polyphenolic compounds than feedlot uh, uh, grain-fed meat. So that's what we have for you today, my friends. Hopefully you found these images helpful. Just, it's nice to know that if you have the extra money when it comes to your food, you should probably uh, go for the grass-fed, pasture-raised, organic option. So I would like to know what you think in the comment section below, my friends. Thanks for tuning all the way through. We'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.